Hi everyone, it's Jan from Jan Plans Things and today I've got another watercolour um, review, overview for you guys. Um, this one is the whole bean set. Um, so they're half pans. I think last time round we did the St. Petersburg set and they were full pans, so they'll double the amount. So this box is a lot smaller, as you can kind of see. Um, it's this whole bean is probably one of the more popular brands um, available for watercolors. They're a they're from Japan and um, and like I found these were pretty reasonably priced if you buy them from Japan um, I noticed that I think on Jackson's art this would be 800 um, 800 Australian dollars or so but from I, from Japan like I checked like Rakuten and stuff like that you can get it for around 160 so that makes it more affordable than, um, than previously so I've not opened this before but it's got some pretty let's have a look oh so this is the swatch card it's one of my favorite things to do to test the colors also got we've also got a color chart which is fantastic because it shows us how light fast each of the colors are as well as which of um which pigments are in them as well and we've got different ratings Got a little key code so <laughs> it's like what series they're from so it's like permanency rating so the four stars are the really really permanent colors um whole beans also pretty famous for making some rarer colors like this one which is the opera which is a bright pink um i think lots of people like to paint with this one because it's such a, a different color compared to a lot of what the other companies make and also whole beans also known for making really really um transparent colors so and i think also they're not known to be very granulating either which um might work really well for my style of painting which is why i was interested in them so now not this box it seems it's come with this really pretty crepe paper on it and i don't want to rip it so i'm just going to try and slide it off oy oy. Awesome. Now that came off and I didn't hurt anything, which is wonderful. Ooh, what a pretty lid. So it looks like it's like it looks like a like the Japanese lacquered boxes, but it's definitely plastic. Um, can I open it? More rice. More power needed. Oh, can I open it? Wait, oh. oh. <clears throat> yes, I can open it. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I didn't know it came with a brush either. It's like bonus. So it's come with a little travel brush. It looks a lot like my little um, little brushes. This one's from Isabe. And I, I love um, these types of travel brushes, actually, because normally... I like them better than the um, like the aqua brushes because I, I don't I don't really like um, the synthetic the really plasticky bristles that you get on those aqua brushes and I find it a little bit difficult to control the amount of water. Let's have a look at this the brush. Ooh, nice. I can't tell what fiber this is, so I'm gonna have to look that up for you guys. Um, I'm not going to stick that back in because I might accidentally damage the bristles. It looks to be about this, uh, a little bit smaller than this one. This is this is like a number six on the White Knights one. Mm, let me have a look. Oh yeah, about closer to this one. This is a this is a number four in the White Knights, which is way bigger than the Windsor Newton number four. So it's probably closer to like an eight or a ten. On the Windsor Newton, so that's kind of really nice. It comes with this. I like it because they fold up and then they, you can close the lid to protect them. This type of brush, and then it's also got a little plasticky pan at the top as well. Now I think this one pops out from the pictures. I can see. Yep. So this comes off, and I think, yeah. So you can clip it there, but I don't know. That seems a little bit a little bit bouncy probably too bouncy for me oh but then they've done it so that you can bounce on all sides 
<laughs> I guess that's kind of nice if you're traveling around and depending on how you like to hold the box but I feel like this might be a bit too heavy so it's like if you're painting outside but on a table ideally this kind of sags a little bit but I think I might keep that up there but um, in the pictures I've seen people put this card this card doesn't fit if I cut it um, or like they can put the little picture here like a little easel and they can they can just kind of like paint on this and then we've got our little watercolor candies so um, that's kind of like the overview of the box so it's got this one has 36 colors in it and I'm gonna try and have a look at the underneath it's white plastic underneath as well I just really like this color it's really really nice um, I kind of wish they I kind of wish they had a version that came with um, like maybe this was metal instead so it's like a little bit more hardy but I do like how this comes out to make it easier to clean so I might put this a bit more to use than normal but I think because I'm at home I will paint using my trusty plate so okay I'm gonna unwrap these and and we'll have a look while I'm unwrapping them if we see anything um, interesting okay Okay, so I actually found these really hard to unwrap. They're really well packaged so that they're kind of like well protected. So the top of the paper has this little blue coating so that the paint doesn't stick to the paper, unlike what I, the problem that I had with the White Knights and the Schmink paints. And then also underneath the pan, this, it's a little magnet and the bottom of the whole case is magnetized so that the pans don't slide around so much. So I had a bit of trouble getting them out of the, um, of the packaging at the beginning, but then after a while, it did work out but it did kind of hurt my fingers after a while because they were so well um they were so well glued but um that's uh that's just something to take into consideration it took a little bit longer than i had wanted to um, set this all up and then um swatching the paints themselves i am doing that thing again with putting the black line in place so that the um so that i can see how transparent they are and these paints are actually fantastically transparent so i was really really happy with how they looked so i think they'll layer up quite nicely but it depends how they fade so I've just finished swatching the colors and the first thing I realized was I had somehow managed to switch the dioxin violet with the paints gray because that kind of looked okay when it was in that row but this purple should really be up there that makes a little bit more sense but um what I was super impressed with when I started swatching these was how easily I was able to lift paint off um, after I just added a tiny bit of water. So most of the time with my um, my paints I have to put water in and I kind of buff the top of it and the paint lifts but this time it was like just one stroke and you can kind of see that it's already um, it's already saturated the brush and that's really really cool. So um, I guess this is what it means by the whole beans re-wet beautifully. So um, I think I'm looking at the colors they're still drying a little bit and you can kind of see a little bit fade. I kind of screwed this one up because I should have drawn a line through it before. And I've mentioned this in the past, but the reason I draw a line through it before I actually swatch it is because I want to see how transparent the colors are. Dab this one on the top and see it after it dries. And that's a little bit, the ink's still a bit wet. But I can kind of see most of these colors are quite transparent. Um, a couple of that I thought would end up being opaque. The black still shows through really, really nicely. So colors that other um, companies normally struggle with making quite transparent, like a couple of the cadmium yellows and the earthy reds. These are really, really, um, they, they've come up really nicely. So that means like you should be able to layer up the colors really well. And the other thing I've noticed is that um, like colors like this one, this one, I think it's PN65, that one looks like a 596 sepia. So this one's a sepia here. And that is, look how smooth the color is. So I think that would be beautiful for tonal work as well. The black is a little bit granulating which is kind of expected but 
Um, most of these colors, I think if you laid them down quite smoothly and not on too much water, like how there's a lot of water on these, they would come with a quite flat color. So if that's the type of um, drawing you like, this might be a really good, um, a really good set of paints for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, do a painting and test these watercolors out like do a test run and um, we'll see how it goes. So when I did my Instagram poll earlier this month asking what theme that I should do um, I got zero votes for cats but that's okay I was only a little bit um, a little bit salty about that but <laughs> I've gone over it now and I've worked out another way to incorporate cat drawing in my life this month and that's a cat bus um, and cat bus I think is one of the characters in my neighbor Totoro and it wasn't until I was drawing him that I was like how many legs does cat bus have like way too many he's like a caterpillar bus with a cat head but Either way, I think he's really, really cute. So um, I had a little, I had quite a bit of fun drawing this. And um, I think it was during this period that I realized that I've improved a lot with the Pentel pocket brush pen. I was able to get much finer lines, but I've also adjusted the way I hold the pen a little bit more. So it's a little bit more like painting, um, like Japanese or Chinese painting styles. I'm holding the pen almost vertically to the page so that I can control really fine strokes. I find that if I slant the pen a little bit, it's a lot harder to control and the lines end up being a lot more varied. So I was really happy with how I was able to get these tiny little strokes um, to, uh, you know, to show the fur and the little details around the eyes. Like originally I was worried that I'd have to switch over to like maybe a micron or a rotring pen to do the little details but I was actually quite impressed like uh, that I'd managed to like improve enough over the last few weeks um, to um, just use the the pen itself to do that type of stroke. I guess it goes to show how much um, like constant practice with the tool can really uh, help you learn how to use it a little bit better. So um, the other thing was that I was a little bit impatient at the beginning there. I had tried to wash, um, put a wash on first with water and I realized that um, the paint, the Pentel pocket brush hasn't dried yet. So I had to leave it for about 45 minutes and, um, and come back to it afterwards because it was just a little bit too, um, it was just a bit runny and I didn't want that to ruin the painting. Uh, so I've started by washing um, a little bit of the yellow, yellow ochre color over, um, over the face of the cat bus. And I found that um, as I was doing this, my swatch card was dry and the yellow ochre is a lot paler than what I'm used to. I'm used to a little bit more saturated colors with the, um, the Daniel Smith, but also my Daniel Smith ones I find a little bit more granulating. So this color was a lot smoother. So what you'll see me doing a lot throughout this video is going back um, with the yellow ochre and mixing it with a little bit of the cadmium yellow deep color as well as the Indian yellow to kind of make a more golden wash over the over the over the fur color as well as adding a little bit of the pink I think I'm using um, I'm using what was that what colors are those that was using a um, carmine to um, tint the ears to make it a little bit warmer as well as using a little bit of sepia and um, just a little bit of the brown as well to um, do to warm up the sides of his face so I've worked out that with the whole beans I was able to layer up a lot and it still looked very transparent which was really nice so that was just something that I was able to do with these colors but it did take a little bit of work to achieve that nice golden color that I wanted because the whole beans faded a little bit more than um, I thought they would uh, so I think that's called tonal shift um, so it was so the yellows were not as bright as um, as the yellows from the St. Petersburg but it did mean that I could work it up a little bit and sorry I said brown before but I actually meant um, I was using burnt umber to create that um, the brown stripes and I'm mixing that with sepia to slowly make it darker I also found because the paint re-wetted so easily I was able to go back and slowly um, and go straight into the pan if I wanted really really um, uh, like really really bright colors instead of mixing it out with water. You can also see that I switched from using the Holbein brush to my Isabe brush because I found that um, for the little detail work I was doing the Isabe was holding a little bit too much paint so I was more likely to splosh a lot of paint onto the page so I wanted to switch to something that it was a little bit smaller. 
And I used um, a mixture of the Indian red and the um, Pyrrol red to create the little um, shade in the mouth. I actually thought they were, they were really nice colors. The Indian red here is a beautiful, soft, earthy red that I think mixes really, really well. Because of how clear and non-cloudy the paints are, I reckon that, that they would make an excellent mixing set to make skin colors. So that's just something that you might want to think about. You can see that I'm going back a lot and slowly adding more pigment to my mixes on my palette and just layering them onto the picture to get the colors as bright as possible. I still find that regardless of what I do, it will still fade a little bit. But that also means that you have a lot more power to go through and slowly shift the tones of the paper, of the of the painting as well. And I did I did really enjoy that slight change in technique um, because they because the paints aren't as super pigmented as I was used to. But I did I liked it because I was able to get a really nice golden glow around the edges of the cat bus and those little um, those little tints and the and the paints themselves are really really smooth so that they blend together really really nicely. I find that most of the colors that I use were completely non-granulating. I checked a few reviews before um, before I started using them and a lot of people did mention that these colors were um, non-granulating so I think if I wanted a granulating effect I would mix a couple of the whole beans with the Daniel Smith colors and I think that would um, that would basically get around it. At this point I thought I would try experimenting with a little bit of like um, streakiness in in the fur to kind of add that detail but then I realized I liked it a little bit more flat so I just went back and painted that um, that brown spot again. Um, I earlier on what I did with the leaves was that I added a little bit of masking fluid so that when I painted over it later, I didn't have to paint around the leaves. Um, I do like using masking fluid a lot for that type of thing. So if it's if it's like a small um, area, and especially with watercolor, if you're slowly working your details around little spots, what you're, it makes the wash not as um, uniform. So that's what masking fluid really, really helps with. I also found that these colors lift pretty well. So the ones that I was using weren't super staining. So that if I did make a mistake, I could quickly pick up a napkin and then go back and then just dab it off. Um, finally, I mixed a little bit of the um, of the of the Indian yellow with a little bit of sepia to create the final shadow effect. I would have done that um, at the beginning of the painting, but because I wasn't sure how um, a gray would react with um, the warm colors, I thought I'd add the shadows afterwards. But I feel like if I did this again, I would have toned everything down with a sepia first. This um, this green, I really, really liked it. I think it's called, um, this one was called a sap green. And it's just such a lovely, happy green color. It's one of the greens that I try to mix a lot with my Daniel Smith set. So I was really happy to see it straight out of the pan look so nice. Um, so I, was, I, I really liked using that color. Um, I also use a, I think the 564 blue. I can't say that word. Fellow cyanide, mm, so that that type of blue, to um to do the 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 clouds and what I not the clouds the sky and what I should have done was switch to a larger brush at this point because I had to go back and continually dip into the well of paint. I did get some overlapping and marbling in the paint when I wanted to a little bit flatter and I think that could have been avoided if I had just used a larger brush and did a little bit quicker or just did a full wash first and then just went over with the with the with the paint a little bit faster. So that's just something that you might want to think about when you're um when you're painting really large areas of what effect you what you're trying to achieve. Finally, I'm just doing a few little finishing touches by dipping it, dipping the brush directly into the sepia and the burnt umber to create those really fine saturated strokes. I really like um, Ghibli's characters. I'm really happy with how this painting turned out. There's like a little magical weirdness that you kind of accept while you're watching the films and then suddenly you're like, oh, that's a bit of a strange character. It's a cat bus with, you know, 15 legs or whatever it was. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with this one. Okay, so I've just finished um, attempting my paint of, uh, of the cat bus. I know you guys uh, didn't say yes to cat themes, but there is cat characters in Ghibli. So I thought I'd give um, the cat bus a try, especially seeing as the husband requested him. And the husband rarely does request a, a character paint. Um, I did start off by using this one. 
um, this brush, but I found it a little bit difficult um, to use to do the details. I think it'd be really good for washes, mainly because I um, I think when you're using this one, because it holds water so well, you have to kind of just dab it off. Otherwise, you're in danger of dropping a lot of paint onto the um, onto the page. So um, it's a good brush, but for my technique of this one, I, because I really wanted to do smaller details, it was probably better for me to switch halfway through. Um, but I think I'll keep using it. Note at the top is a little hole, um, and that's so that when you put the brush in and it's drying, um, it doesn't actually get moldy. So if you just end up covering your brushes straight away and there's no way for it to breathe, then they will get moldy and you'll be sad. So the colors themselves, um, they, so you've seen the spotch card, it's dried a little bit and they've done a little bit of fading. And I think um, overall, like some of the yellows faded a little bit more than I had thought, except for this one, which um, remains very, very bright. But um, it did mean that I had to change my technique a little bit um, or as by changing technique, I meant I needed to experiment a little bit more with how to mix these colors, especially because like the cat bus is kind of like this golden yellow color. I feel like I could get this color really easily with my Daniel Smith ones, but that's not because it, the paints are better. It's just, I'm just more used to them. So I've used a combination of um, these colors and, and added the browns as well. Um, a thing that I forgot to do at the beginning of the painting was do all the pre-shading. And I normally do that with the blue gray, but because the picture was so warm, I wasn't actually sure which color to do the shading with. I probably would have gone with a lighter sepia if I had done that at the beginning, because I feel like the sepia would have sat quite nicely underneath. In the end though, I ended up uh, doing it a little bit more classically by just layering the color on top. And I'm pretty happy with them. Like the paint, um, has this beautiful transparency. It is a little bit softer than um, like the white nights that I was using last week. And I'm just gonna put this down because it keeps lifting. And um, you can see if you're not quite fast, there's a little bit of granulation. So the, um, the color is not like completely smooth, but overall this is still quite a nice blue. Um, the, these little terracotta browns and stuff were quite smooth and so was this green. And I think it's just more of the technique that I was doing. I think if I had just laid down the, um, the paint a lot faster, um, I wouldn't have had this type of marbling, but that was my insistence of using a smaller brush. All in all though, I really did enjoy using this palette because it, um, because it re-wetted so easily. I, um, it meant that it was just like, it was kind of like instant brushing for really, really bright colors. I was able to dip directly into the pan and then just paint it directly on. And a lot of the colors, um, like the, the, the little pinks and stuff, they glow, they have this like lovely little glow to them, which I really, really like. So overall, I really, really like this palm box. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more expensive than say the um, the White Knights one from from last week because you can't, it's kind of like oh it was probably because I didn't actually buy it but I think it was about it, if I was looking at the eBay prices it's about forty five dollars Australian more than the White Knights box um, but you get half the amount of paint because the paints are only half pans, not full pans. So um, it's just something to consider. But honestly, I've had my Schmink half pan um, box for a really, really long time and I've never really gone through it. So it's really dependent on the types of colors that you like. And if this size is more convenient for you and these are the colors that you like more, um, that's something that you might want to pick. The other difference is the White Knights box, most of the pigments are single pigment. I was looking at the whole bean, um, the whole bean reviews on hand print as well and they said there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pigments that are mixed in that you're a little bit unsure of, which means that sometimes when you're doing blends, the color might not come out as you expect. So if you're using the, pa um, the paints for the first time, you know, just swatch it off to the side and just check um, the, if the colors are coming up as what you expected. But yeah, um, I hope 
I hope you enjoyed that video. It kind of gave you a little bit of an overview onto the palm box and I'm going to continue using it and, and experimenting with it. But thanks very much for everyone for watching and I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.